Have you ever had a bad feeling about someone that ended up being right? Yes, a bunch of times. I have spent many years incarcerated, and I have been around a lot of shy people. I started studying behavioral science just so I could start reading people better because you never know what the next man is going to do inside those walls. I took what I learned inside and used it when I got into society. I can read people pretty well, and I can spot shyness from a mile away. Be careful with certain kinds of people. If you meet them in a bad area or in a bad situation, you might want to keep an eye on them. Don't go to McDonald's and expect a steak dinner. Story 2 Yes, my dad's best friend growing up has a son my age. We were really close as kids, but they moved away, and I didn't talk to him for years. When we were teens, my dad's friend came to visit. Something about his son literally made my skin crawl. I was left alone at home with him and my three young siblings while the parents went out for the night, and I was nearly frantic trying to ensure he did not have a moment alone with my siblings. When our parents returned, I told them something was wrong with the boy, and to please not leave me alone with him again. My dad was upset and demanded to know why I would say that. Did the son do something? He honestly hadn't actually done or said anything that I could pin this feeling on. So I told them, I think my animal brain just knows a predator when I see one. My dad thought I was being dramatic, but my mom believed me and made sure we weren't alone with the son for the rest of their visit. About a year later, it turned out the son got caught in the act of raping his niece. He told the police he was glad he was caught because he couldn't stop himself. My dad has never doubted my intuition since. Story 3 I met this guy once, and we hit it off. When we decided to start dating, he said I should meet his best friend. A week later, we went to grab coffee at her work, and when she served us, she jumped on his lap and kissed him on the mouth. Well, I wasn't particularly happy about that if I was honest, and I didn't really like her. I just got a bad feeling. A week after that initial encounter, we went for coffee again, and to my surprise, she jumped on my lap and kissed my mouth. We've been best friends since. Story 4 I had a friend for four years who would casually insult me for my interests, the way I look, the way I dress, even the fact that I did well in tests at school. They would get very angry at me and insult me and all of that, and then blame the whole thing on me, like I made them so angry just by being me which of course I didn't. They were very insecure and took it all out on me and other people, and although we are no longer friends, what they said to me over the past four years still sticks with me, and I still think about them quite a lot. I hope they got the help they needed. Story 5 My parents used to do this when I was severely depressed, and not only was it ineffective, it actually made me feel far worse. The problem with the others have it worse than you method of comforting someone is that it often just translates to your feelings aren't valid and you're only upset because you're so spoiled and greedy. That's not really helpful. That may seem extreme, but it's what happens for a lot of people. Even when I'm not depressed, that approach always rubs me the wrong way because it doesn't address the person's real feelings. It just tries to invalidate them. Telling someone that they shouldn't be sad because other people have it worse basically tells them that not only are they in a tough spot, but they're also wrong for being upset about it. That doesn't make most people feel better. It doesn't make their sadness, frustration, or fear go away, and it makes them feel like they're subpar people for not being super happy 24 7 Emotions stem from the wild animal portion of our brain. Reason can help redirect your immediate thinking, but you can't just tell your feelings to go away and expect them to shut off. It doesn't work like that. So trying to get someone to reject their feelings of grief, anxiety, frustration, or sadness doesn't work because you can't just flatly tell those things to go away and expect it to work. Even if someone's feelings seem silly or overdramatic to you, they are that person's emotional reality for the moment and you need to address them from that angle, 
not from the angle of where you think they should be. I suppose this approach might work sometimes for folks who are struggling with comparing themselves to others unfairly, but in most cases I think it's the most counterproductive thing you could do. Empathy almost always trumps apathy. Validation is usually more effective than shame. Helping someone first accept their feelings for what they are is often the best way to help him or her move past them. Story 6 I believe you are replicating an early adaptive response. You probably grew up in an environment where being assertive, communicating your needs, or expressing anger were discouraged. You most likely felt very bad or guilty when your caregiver responded with upset or hurt because you objected to them. You were sensitive enough to deeply want to maintain the approval and affection of all the important people around you. Remaining in good terms with others became essential to you. Over time, you learned that others' needs are more important than your own. You feel bad now when you try to resist that learned belief. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.